Hi, this is David Taylor from the Effective Writing Center. And today I want you to do something. Whenever in the future you are given a critique essay to write, I want you to do one thing instantly. And that is to substitute the word evaluation for critique. Why? Because both a critique and evaluation do the same thing. You are giving an evaluation of something. You are speaking to its value, whether you call it a critique or an evaluation. And regardless of whether you call it a critique or an evaluation, it's something that you do every day in your life, whether on the personal level or the professional level. On the personal level, you might ask, hmm, is this the right outfit for a job interview? And you critique your outfit. Or you say, why did my spouse do this entire townhouse in beige? Those are personal uh, examples. But on the professional level, they are very, very important. For example, you're hiring someone and you ask, should I hire this person? And you critique that person's skill set and fit for your company. Or you might ask, does my team's product launch plans sound feasible and workable? It's a very important critique or evaluation. Should I buy a notebook or a laptop for my sales team? A very important expenditure and critique or evaluation. So regardless of whether you're aware of it or not, you're constantly doing critiques and evaluations. And doing that, having the ability to do that in the workplace, will make you one of the trusted people in the workplace and will have a significant impact on your career path. Now, what I want us to do today is to take a look at the parts of a critique and to go over them one by one. The parts we'll look at are introduction, summary, evaluation, response, and conclusion. First, the introduction. Unlike the introduction to most of the essays you write in school, where the main purpose is simply to introduce the thesis, the introduction of a critique or evaluation essay is more complex. First, you must introduce the author and the title of the work being critiqued. This information is often in the first sentence of a critique's introduction. But so long as the info is at or near the top, you're fine. Second, state the author's main point, whether it's the main point of the entire work or the main point of the section you are critiquing. The main point is sometimes called the takeaway, what the author wants the reader to remember or to do after reading. Third, state in one to two sentences your overall evaluation of the work you're critiquing. Now, if overall evaluation sounds like your conclusion, bingo, give yourself 10 points, you are correct. So, it may be wise for you to leave this portion of your introduction unwritten until you have finished the entire first draft. Fourth and last, be sure to add any background information the reader needs to place the author's work in context. What overall topic is the work related to? Is there a controversy involved? Be sure to set the stage since your reader hasn't read the work as you have. Now, after the introduction comes part two, the summary. And this is a summary of the entire work, if that's what you're critiquing, or it's a summary of only the section of the work you're critiquing. Now, when you're writing the summary, you are a reporter. You are a reporter providing objective, unbiased reportage of the following two things the author's overall point or takeaway, the main supports offered for that point. And, like a good reporter, your language should be untainted by your own views and certainly be written in the third person, no I's or U's. Your goal, after someone reads a good summary, also called an abstract, that reader should know the author's thesis and main point without detecting any of your opinion. Now, part three is the evaluation. This is where you transition 
from being a reporter to being a judge. And just like a judge at a gymnastics meet, you look at the performance and judge its weak parts and its strong parts. And also, like a judge at a gymnastics meet, you have a scorecard, a scorecard full of criteria by which you are judging that performance. Now, in our case, in the case of this text, you're going to be scoring not by mount and dismount, flexibility and strength, but rather you're going to be scoring by criteria such as accuracy of information, presence or lack of definition of key terms, hidden assumptions, clarity of language, fairness, did the author weigh both sides without undue bias? Logic and organization. Do the main points link together in a meaningful way and add up to a valid argument? Or are there gaps in the argument? Fallacies. These refer to such argument no-nos as name-calling, hasty generalization, oversimplification, substituting emotional language for fact or logic. The black-white are either-or fallacy, like you're either what with us or you're with the terrorist. Or the bandwagon appeal. Everybody else is doing it, so it must be okay. And so on. Now, part four is the response. You're no longer a reporter. You're no longer a judge. You are you, giving your personal evaluation or opinion on this work. How do you do that? Simple. You ask yourself questions just like these. What do I agree or disagree with? What does the author get right? What does she or he get wrong, in my opinion? What ultimate merit does this work have? Some? A little? None? A lot? Would I recommend this work as a source on this topic, or should it be avoided in your research? Why or why not? You see, this response section is also where you would use outside sources to back up your opinion of this work, its merits and demerits. In that sense, your response section is like a miniature essay, where your thesis is your opinion of the work and your main points support your opinion. Finally, you're ready to wrap this thing up. Part five is the conclusion. Now this conclusion does not have to be long at all. As a matter of fact, it can be very short because your main tasks are to remind your audience of the overall importance of the topic, bring the reader back to ground zero, the topic at hand. Two, bring together your assessment or rating of the work together with your personal response to it. In doing so, focus on overall strengths and weaknesses. Then, use both of those to state what you believe is the ultimate success of this work. There you go, the mysteries of the critique demystified. In this short lesson, you've learned to introduce the work, summarize the work objectively, Rate the work using a set of criteria that are clear to you and the reader. To respond to the work in a personal way that is backed up by sources and your own logic and reasons. And finally, to wrap up the work by telling its overall success and the importance of the topic to the reader. Now, do those things in that order and you will have a clear and meaningful critique. Good luck with it.